living things grow. Um, now, obviously, you're aware that at the moment you're certainly growing. Um, by the time you're perhaps about 20, most of that growth will stop, certainly in terms of um, getting taller. Other organisms, however, continue to grow through their life. Now, what we would refer to as growth is really um, the idea that cells are dividing um, in the process of what's called mitosis. Mitosis produces identical cells, so we could start off with one cell and it could double to two, then each of those cells can divide. And we've got four cells and we can divide again to eight cells and so on and so on. And what we're doing here is we're growing in size. So it's not as if one cell just gets bigger and bigger and bigger. Growth occurs because cells um, undergo cell division, mitosis, and increase in number. Now, unlike um, humans, unlike you, plants will continue growing throughout their life. And it requires the presence of cells called meristem cells. Now, the, the thing with meristem cells is that they are unspecialised cells. And what this means is that they haven't become a definite type of cell yet. So, in a plant you can get various types of cells, um, various types of tissue, xylem tissue, which is to transport water around, phloem, which can transport um, food around the plant. You could have the cells in the top of the leaf, the palisade cells, which are, which draw a rough kind of leaf out here. Palisade cells are uh, long and kind of rectangular cells, and they're absolutely packed with chloroplasts, which are needed for photosynthesis. So they're specialised, and they're near the top of the leaf, uh, packed with these photosynthetic pigments, it's chlorophyll. Um, most of the light in, in the plant is going to hit strike in the top of the leaf. Most of the photosynthesis happens there. So that, that's an example of a specialised cell. Merry stem cells are unspecialised. They haven't turned into a particular type of cell yet. But they're only found in certain locations in the plant. We need to know what these locations are. If we draw a simple plant out like this, let's put some little buds on it to show that it's uh, actually growing. There we go. And then we've got some roots. The merry stem cells are found just behind, not actually right at the very end, just behind the tip of the shoots. So here where we've got um, some buds, just behind the tip of the roots. And they're also found in I suppose a ring of uh, meristem cells in the stem and this is what allows the stem to get wider. If we wanted to make use of some of these stem cells, for example if you wanted to clone a plant, uh, one of the things you can do, you might remember this from B1, is to take a cutting of the plant and this is where, here's my um, plant stem Let's imagine I took a cutting, so I took off a leaf from the plant. I wouldn't actually slice it off um, on the stalky bit. I would slice off a little bit of the stem as well. So here it is. Here's my new sliced off leaf. I would dip the end of where I've cut off my cutting in rooting powder. And rooting powder contains chemicals called auxins, which are a type of um, chemical in plants that can encourage growth. In fact, what this will do is it will encourage some of these merry stem cells in here to turn into roots. If I wanted to make sure it survived, I would plant it in some compost. And because my plant until it grows roots, will not be very good at absorbing water. In fact, it'll lose more water than it gains. Um, I would cover it in something like a polythene bag 
just to make sure that it doesn't lose too much water. And this will eventually start growing roots and I've created a clone of my original plant.